Welcome to the Smart Business Show, episode 131, where today uh, we're going to talk to Savon Penn. And Savon Penn, I met in a reading group called Read to Lead, because we both believe, as does Jeff, that if you want to really lead and succeed, then you need to read. Man, that's a lot of rhyming words. Anyway. Um, and Savon is a counselor, so he deals um, with a whole host of issues, but he deals with some families and uh, marriage, kids, and uh, you know, business people who are looking to be successful, and he's been doing that for a long time. In our conversation today, we talk about, I guess he started trying private practice, and it didn't go as well as he hoped, and then we talked a lot about his relationship with his wife, who's a very different person than the entrepreneurial side he is, and how, how he handles that, and how he handles his seasons which is something I talk a lot about and uh, I think I introduced that idea to him but his seasons of like working a lot and and um, being there for his kids and his kids are a little older than mine right there in their teens Um, it's a great conversation I really enjoyed it and uh, you'll find all the links for the things we talked about in the show notes so welcome to smart business show today we're going to talk to Savan Penn who I met uh, through the Read to Lead reading group because we are both readers and we both, I guess we're looking for a reading group. Um, You're another group leader in there, right? Yes, facilitate. Uh, Facilitator, group facilitator. (laughs) So we both do that. We just lead parts of the discussion groups. Um, Why don't you tell tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and yeah. Sure. So um, my my day job is as a health coach uh, for... uh, health maintenance organization. So I help patients with behavior change, healthy living. So help folks with uh, losing weight, quitting tobacco, stress management, healthy Mm -hmm. sleep, things like that, keeping physically healthy. And then my part-time job is as a individual and uh, marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. So I help folks with uh, mood disorders, uh, with addiction, and helping them with, with relationships and just kind of uh, finding their uh, best fit in life and uh, with work and, and family. Mm-hmm. And fit is hard to find, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's one of the f- fun things uh, uh, l- lately that helping uh, millennials uh, kind of uh, find a, a good fit for a career mm-hmm. and uh, help, helping entrepreneurs find you know, their one thing. Uh, um, their their passion, mm-hmm. you know. So cool, and that's that's a lot of what I love doing too, right? Helping help people build that business they dreamed of once, instead of working all the hours and and neglecting their relationship so much. Right. So something I wanted to talk about uh, today with you was what about or what do you do as you talk to your clients and bringing their bringing their spouse into the business? Like around, do you do anything around setting expectations for work time, income? Well, this has, has been like a, a 15 year journey with my wife. <laughs> um, the, I, I'm still in that transition of trying to move from, from uh, the, the, the day job to the, 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 the ideal, you know, the, the, the dream job. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, uh, she, she we're, we're really opposites in terms of um, personality. So she, I, I'm the, I'm the dreamer. I think John Acuff calls it the, the, the how and the wow. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the wow uh, person and lots of stops and starts uh, with business. And um, she, she's the practical one. She's uh, the one who does the budget and um, kind of grounds me to reality and, and, to, and ask that all important question, how are we going to pay for this? How is this going to happen? Uh, so we, we, we complement each other, so balance each other out. Um, and lately she's, she's, I think, been opening up more to, to the possibilities. Um, it, it's, it's, I think it's, she's trusting me more that what's ahead maybe in the next three to five years is, is gonna um, uh, come 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 to fruition. <laughs> so it's tough, though, uh, um, as an entrepreneur. And so, what have you two done though to like match those expectations together? Right, because you have wildly different ones. I'm sure. Yeah, I know. Around here, we get stuff like, 
like, I think there's always three things said, which is I have a counseling degree. So there's always three things that is something we were taught, what you thought you said, what you actually said and what you, what the other person heard. You know, lots mm-hmm. of times in a, in a relationship, there'll be, I don't know, some implication like you planned dinner, right? And the implication is, of course I did. But when you come down like, oh, what's for dinner? Oh, I don't know. Right. And the, I, and this happens at our house all the time. <laughs> I, I understood dinner was going to have planned and I'd come down and help with it at four o'clock and it, there's nothing planned. So how do you guys match those expectations together? So you are on the same page. Yeah. It, it just taking a lot of time in, in, in conversation to, to be really clear about what I'm talking about. So for, for example, um, I've had a dream to, to start a podcast and do a podcast for like two, three years mm-hmm. and um, spent the last couple years um, preparing and practicing with Facebook live videos and Periscope and things like that. Um, different speaking opportunities with work. So preparing, it, it, growing as a communicator and, and that's all great. But for my wife, she, how is that going to pay the bill? Mm. So I've been doing a lot of working for free and like lots of time spent blogging um, mm-hmm. with, with no uh, like monetization. And so learning more about how to make that uh, work as a sustainable income source. Um, as I learn more, I share what I'm learning so that it, it makes a little more sense to her. It doesn't just seem like this uh, fun hobby that my husband <laughs> likes to spend his time doing, um, but it's actually something that uh, might replace the, the income of the day job. Mm. So just clear communication, being, being really specific about what it's going to look like. Yeah, I know on our end, I've had, sounds like maybe an easier time because my wife listens to a number of business podcasts. So she is like when we talk about marketing tactic or something, she often knows, right? She recommends shows for me regularly that I, oh, you oh, need okay. to read this one. You need to listen to this. You need to read this book. But something that we always do is seasons. So before we had our second daughter, second mm-hmm. of three, um, I work basically double full time from November to uh, December. But then mm-hmm. I took off from December 20th through to like February 23rd or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we had our daughter in the middle and I taught, I was away for three days to teach a course, which I'd already agreed to long before we knew we were going to have a kid. Mm-hmm. And that's it. The rest of the time I was just off and around and we use those as seasons, right? So this is a season of more work. I'm entering one right now where I'm doing a lot more local meetings, which I don't normally do. It's a season where I'll be out in the evenings and away on weekends extra, just you know, to go out for coffee or to meet someone, go on a hike with someone and talk about business you guys ever done anything like that or well i'm, I'm hoping to do like a, a weekend retreat mm-hmm. with her to go mm-hmm. through uh the living forward book with uh, oh, no, michael right. hyatt so michael okay. hyatt and daniel harkavay they they wrote a book where you write out your uh your ideal week uh yep. do yep. you know a mission statement and uh a, a yearly calendar So that would incorporate the different seasons. And I think visually showing it to her, just like it's like having an offsite retreat with my wife, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. that's definitely something that we want to do. We we recently had a a vacation uh, and and had lots of time on the road. It was like over 2000 miles of driving and um, lots of good conversations about, the, the near future and, and also when the kids are out of the house. So, um, yeah, the, my, for, for my wife, she, 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 she doesn't read uh, uh, business or listen to podcasts. Uh, that's a, a whole nother world. She's very um, uh, focused on uh, her, her teaching. She teaches homeschool kids science and, uh, and she, she uh, she does that for a couple of different groups, and so she's she spends a lot of time in physics and chemistry world. Um, she doesn't have that much brain space for my dreams, but she she makes the time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so she's very in like the hard right physics and science world, and you're operating in it's more of the feeling world, I suppose, right? Yes, counseling definitely is the emotions. <laughs> or, yeah. 
That's good. Opposites do attract, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so when you work with your clients and you talk about say, a healthy work day or balance, right? Because we're talking about seasons a little bit. What, I and mean, what do you advise them? How do you advise them to negotiate that with their spouse or their significant other? Well, I encourage them to, to risk and, and open up about what's imp- why is it important to them? What does it mean to them? Um, because a lot of couples, they can get hung up on the details and they, they can get frustrated quickly because one or both of them will feel shot down really mm-hmm. quick. And because this is talking about life and dreams and kind of your hopes, it, you can be sensitive to criticism or feedback um, about the details. Um, or and you can quickly feel unsupported. So I, I encourage folks to kind of s- start with feeling, sharing why it's important to them, and give the other person a chance to to, to really understand um, where where they're coming from. And then you, once you understand that, hopefully you can work through to a a win win situation, um, something that's going to work for everybody. Where everybody feels um, fulfilled, but then also uh, what's needed to feel safe and secure for the person who needs the numbers to to line up and for you to be in the black, um, they can be confident with the plan moving forward. Now, what if you guys set up a plan, but then it's it's not happening execution wise, right? So you may say you need five thousand dollars a month or something, and what if you're not hitting it? How do you like? How do you keep talking about that with your, I guess, significant other? Yeah, the, um, the, there was a time a few years ago when I tried to make private practice work, and um, I'm I'm not a very good uh, independent counselor. I work with a group now. Uh, because of my strengths and weaknesses, but there were some pretty lean years um, right out of graduating. Uh, I averaged one client a week Mm. in the counseling practice (laughs) that didn't pay the bills. It barely paid the rent for for my office. And so you, you have to get to the point where you, you, you take the leap of faith together. Um, and for, for a lot of folks, myself included, like the self-confidence and the insecurity and the, like the gremlins that this isn't going to work, you don't have what it takes, all that stuff, <laughs> like that's hard enough. But then if your spouse, your partner isn't believing in you to either, mm-hmm. th- th- that can be a really dark and discouraging time. So t- uh, again, just talking about where you're at, honestly, um, and, and asking for what you need. What do you mean? Um, so sometimes I've had to ask Julie that I, I just, I need you, I need your support. I need your, you, you to trust me. And also I need to, to listen to her and say, this is, well, she's really scared. This is what she sees on the budget, on the spreadsheet. And she communicated, well, what she needs from me. So she, she would, these are our bills. Like this is the number that we need to hit. And so that encouraged me to, to not procrastinate and just, I'm the eternal optimist, but early on I'd be like, ah, it'll, it'll work out. It'll just work out. But I wasn't doing the work mm. that I needed to do. I didn't have the self-discipline um, to, to, to work hard, to, to make, the, the, the phone calls to network. Uh, and so I, that's a long way of saying Cur- Curtis I, is uh, making sure that you stay positive and stay hopeful. Mm-hmm. Because emotion to do the hard work through the, kind of that messy middle until you get to like a place it's such an emotional journey. Uh, you have to stay positive. So when I get discouraged, she encourages me when she gets 
anxious or worried. I try to try to stay positive. The mm-hmm. few times that we've both been down and uncertain about the future, well, our, our friends, our faith have helped. Um, we often, yeah, mo- most of the years in, in our marriage, we've had uh, friends that we would get together uh, with uh, at, from church, just like a small group, like once a week or every other week. And talking with other uh, families, and, and it's not just about business and career, but like with parenting struggles, <laughs> you know, when, when we're having a bad, not just day or week, but like months. Oh yeah. I get it. Yeah. I had a conversation with a friend of mine <clears throat> who happens to be a marriage and family counselor and he hikes a lot too. We started talking about hiking and I mean, I was like, okay, I read the one book you gave us, but man, this, like, I was livid with my daughter on Monday. Like, do you have anything else I can do? Like read? And he was like, absolutely. And he gave me a couple other ideas. And then we went back to talking about hiking and like other, other outdoor trips and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the, I, I love resources and books. Like mm-hmm. I try to read through hard things in life. <laughs> There's a book for it somewhere. And so that's kind of my mode. Um, so, that, so that's been helpful to get suggestions. M- my wife doesn't function that way uh, with, with things. With reading is, is more downtime and uh, an escape. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, taking the time again to, to communicate and just summarize what I've, I've learned or ideas that might be helpful um, have, have helped. Um, and again, like meeting together is we're, we're so busy and, and we think and approach problems so differently we're, we're, we can kind of get parallel, like kind of compartmentalized. And so having this place to talk with other families and, and couples um, together so we're hearing the same thing and then you know the drive home um, you know we, we talk about what was shared and and how it's going to work for our family what it's going to look like in our family has been really helpful I think one thing you said there was extra interesting when you said you're like the eternal optimist but you also need to stay up and they're basically two sides of the same coin right like ah, it'll work out you're the happy but you need to stay in that happy mode without letting it fall into the laissez-faire We'll just, it'll happen. It'll happen. We won't worry about it, which is a hard, because to, to run a business, to be an entrepreneur, you just have to keep, it's going to work out. It's going to work out and keep pushing on it if you believe it. And it will, but sometimes it's a matter of attrition, right? That messy middle in it seems way longer than you ever anticipated it would be. Right, right. Hmm. And the er, early on, I, I, I will say I, I was, I did not work hard enough. I was a procrastinator. Um, I, I spent way too much time at the gym playing basketball and watching basketball. Mm. Um, one of my hobbies during, during grad school um, was uh, mixed martial arts. And I, I, would, I was competing and, and wanting to be a, pro- a professional fighter. Um, but it... it it didn't work very well for my, my family. Uh, back then, this was 15, 17 years ago. I, w- I was our youngest. She, she was four, five at the time. I'd, I'd bring her to the gym, but uh, honestly, I was really selfish. I was like neglecting um, uh, my wife and, and, and my daughter at the time. I was really kind of obsessed with that. And so... Um, why do you think you're obsessed? Well, uh, back, back then, um, I, I think for, for martial arts, it was something that I did really well. And so it, that, that can be kind of, uh, intoxicating is finding your sweet spot, you know, doing, doing something you do well. Um, back back then i was working graveyard uh working full-time graveyard going to school grad school um and first-time father um and i felt more competent in um in the gym than at home Mm. and 
you know, it, it, it took a series of events, probably it's too long to share here, but, but basically my life falling apart and getting injured mm. and having a wake up call about what's most important in life. Punching people in the face is not the most important thing in life. My, my, my wife, my daughter, um, and, um, you know, my faith and living that out is much more important than trying to become popular and trying to, you know, get on TV, um, and become a professional fighter. I, I was in a gym with uh, several guys who were pro, so that was what they were doing. So that was what I was looking up to, mm. you know, I wanted to fit in and, uh, yeah, the, you know, if I had a do over, I would have done it differently for sure. And that's why I'm trying to encourage guys um, now with, with the book that I'm writing or I've written and it's coming out is. And what's the title? Uh, it's uh, Black Belt Parenting. So it's, you know, I still love mixed martial arts and, and jujitsu. And I, I like helping out the younger guys as much as I can in the gym, trying to keep up with them still. <laughs> uh, but uh, this book is, it, it's to encourage guys to be like an expert at being a dad, being a, like aspire to be a great dad, mm. not just okay, not just get by, but you know, I, I would love for the guys that, that read this book for their kids to say, I had a great dad. My dad was there for me, you know? And even though, you know, my, my daughter, she turned 21 and uh, was pretty disengaged and disconnected from her and my wife in, the, in those times. Her schedule was crazy. Even though the schedule's still pretty crazy, <laughs> um, you know, um, working part-time, um, full-time and then a part-time practice, um, I thankfully can say that we've, we have a great relationship and communicate because I, I, I made the changes I need to make um, the adjustments and wish I had made the changes sooner. Um, but you know, she's still young. We're still young. Um, yeah. I mean, you've already alluded to it. Let me ask you directly though. How, as we talked to parenting, how does parenting and family impact success? So when family's going bad, how does that impact like the rest of your life? Oh, well, unfortunately, when family's going bad, but other things are going well, you, you can trick yourself. You can deceive yourself. So it, it's that whole thing of, um, you know, the ladder of success being on the wrong wall. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it, it takes painful things for you to have a wake-up call sometimes. So sometimes that can be with a spouse who's brave enough to call you on it and say, hey, you know, we're, we're hurting. Like, we miss you. Um, and even when you're home and present, if you're on your phone or on your laptop the, the all evening, mm-hmm. um, th- that, that doesn't work. No. And so around here, we opt for phones in the drawer. So when my wife's home, my mm. phone isn't even in my office. I I focus on work then and she's away traveling right now doing a course. So I put it on top of the fridge and that's, if I'm putting it in my hand or it's in my pocket and we're inside the house, then my six year old will be like, dad, you're not supposed to be on your phone. And I say, here, I give it to her and she'll go put it in the drawer. We have one drawer set for charges where we charge things. So she's great. Great. Mm. Yeah. See, she's six and you've she's given her permission. Yeah. Absolutely. You've given her permission to give her, give you feedback. Absolutely. I mean, if, you know, she'll sometimes say, you're not supposed to be on your phone. It's like, okay, but I'm trying to text mommy or grampy. I'm sending them the picture you just asked me to take. And she's like, oh, okay. And then I'll <laughs> try to put the phone away. And that's and one of the reasons I bought a Kindle is so that I'm reading, right? So I love to read. I often will just carry a book around and the Kindle makes it easy, but so easy on your phone to jump into other stuff. I know I've even started printing off my Instapaper articles. So when I'm reading like Instapaper stuff, I read it on, like I have a, sheets of papers tabled together. 
So we try yeah. really hard. I mean, so many parents want to limit their child's screen in time and there's tons of research about how bad it is, but, and it's mm -hmm. still in the middle of your relationships, right? I mean, it's frustrating for me when my wife, my wife's a, she's just not terrible. Our seasons are worse, but she's on Facebook and I'm like, just, I'm trying to talk to you. And she's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like how, like she feels the same way when you're like, I'm flipping through, I don't know, running videos or something on YouTube, right? She feels the same way. So knowing, right. knowing that, and even knowing like in the rule, I don't take your phone into the bathroom. Not allowed. <laughs> there's a, there's a funny comic here. That's like, basically if you have your phone in there, it's going to take you twice as long. If your phone has Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, it's like 20 times as long. That's it. That's, that's how long a bathroom trip takes. <laughs> that's right. So, yeah. Yeah. And, the, I, I, I like the seasons. It, mm. That's a really helpful thing. It's um, I, the last, the last two years, I, I got away from my month off Facebook. I, I, I had done that for like three or four years, and I, I, the last year, the, the the we went on a, a trip to the Philippines. My son and I. Um, to, to help out at an orphanage. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, uh, th this is my month off Facebook. Um, but but Julie's like, yeah, but we, we want to keep in touch with you. So I said, oh, okay. But then I, I did it. I rationalized again th this summer. Like, oh, I'm helping out with book, book launch group or whatever. And, you know, that that's the way people communicate with me. Mm -hmm. um, and even in that, like, yeah, I... Yeah. I'm not a huge Facebook person, but for read to lead, I have a block of time scheduled in the day where I will check some social media stuff. And that's when I check the, the read to lead group and that's it. I don't, eh, I don't, don't is very strong. I very much try not to check it in other times. I'm not always winning at that, but I very much try not to, I don't have Facebook on my phone and I have actually, especially when I'm out and about my Safari doesn't have access to the web. I just turned it right off. That way, when I look at it, I'm like, what am I trying to do? I'm like trying to look something up that's local, I'll turn it on. Otherwise, it's, oh, you're right, I don't need to do this. So nice. I'm just taking the step of moving it out of your pocket, okay. right? At the park with my kids, it was in the beach bag because I reached my pocket a few times. So I was like, nope. And the only thing I had out, I had my book out, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's checking in with yourself and w w with your family. How are we doing with screen time? Mm. You know, and... The, the screens it could be it could be books my, my kids are readers the, you they'll be gone for half a day so mm -hmm. he, even that like how, how just honestly how are we doing and um and, and then what will we do instead too mm -hmm. well we, we want to spend more time we want to walk more together as a family or whatever so having those conversations is really helpful now we also put like, so we do a lot of outdoor stuff with our kids, big hikes and stuff up mountains. And we put out, well, wait, March, we actually blocked out. We put calendars up on the wall and put like, this is a weekend that we're out. This is a weekend, like a Saturday, we're going to go for a hike. This is a weekend. We're actually going to go backpacking with the kids. And we blocked that out long ago. So there's a few times people are like, can you come and do, you know, my, my friend hosts a crazy meet night where they have, we had horse left recently. I've also eaten boa constrictor there and, a bunch of other things, <laughs> weird things there. Um, <laughs> and, but he called me the one time. I was like, I can't go. That's the night we're going to go. We're going to go hiking. I can't go that time. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that that was the priority. And we did, one of our kids was sick, so we didn't. But instead we did like a picnic in the backyard and we spent like, we used it as like time, family time instead. Not just, okay, fine. Kids, you can watch TV tonight, which is our usual Friday thing. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's And when you do that, Curtis, well, like your kids know that they're a priority mm. and that you would rather spend time with them and that you're they're important to you mm -hmm. so then as they get older then they they free you up like like right now the, the time of that we're spending to talk we're we're, we're at the beach uh at, yep. for a week off and you know we 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 hit the beach we've been having fun we've been watching old movies and then I told him, hey, guys, I got to go talk to Curtis up in Canada uh, <laughs> this morning. And they're like, oh, great, Dad. Cool. And then we're going to go have some fun later. Yeah, because they're not always wondering if you'll spend time with them, right? Always trying to fight for it. They know that they are a priority. Right, right. Cool.
cool. And, so uh, I think we're about done. I got, so I've got some fast questions for you. One of oh, sure. Svan's <laughs> great resources is called Bridging the Gap. Um, and you can get that off his email list. There's a link in the show notes for you to go get it. Why did you write it? And what gaps do you have currently? Mm. Well, the, I, I wrote it for uh, folks who, like my coaching clients, who struggle with their, their weight um, or, or how much exercise they're getting with their health. Basically, they know what they should do or they know where they want to get to in life and with their health. But for whatever reason, they've got obstacles in front of them or the main one, they struggle with believing that they can do it, that they have what it takes, or they've, they've made lots of efforts at losing weight um, or getting back on track with their health, but it, it just hasn't worked out for them. It's just an encouragement for them to keep going and stick to it. Um, pro one of the gaps I have in my life probably right now is uh, self-care, is, is making the time to prioritize getting to the gym. Mm. I've done better this summer, um, which has been great, par partly because the kids spend a lot of time at summer camp and uh, ha have a little more free time. Um, but being intentional that even when I'm tired um, and don't feel like going to the gym, uh, just just do it. And then, you know, always feel better after I go get beat up by these younger guys uh, in the gym. <laughs> yeah, awesome. that's what, probably the main gap, physical health. <clears throat> what book have you read more than once? One book I, I really uh, love to read, uh, usually each, each summer. Um, it, it's a fun summer book. It's uh, called Love Does uh, by Bob Goff. Um, he's a great storyteller. Um, he's a lawyer down in Southern uh, California. And he's uh, like an, an ambassador to uh, Rwanda. Um, and he explains how that happened um, in the book. Uh, short, short chapters, uh, super inspiring, um, really fun, uh, really positive. And uh, the last couple, couple years, my, my, my kids, have, have, I, I would read it out loud to them. And then so they'd, uh, they'd read it too. Uh, I, we, we gave it away to our friend that we visited on, on our trip because we, we love sharing that book. Cool. And finally, what resources do you recommend to your clients? Um, this may be cliche, but if you haven't read it already, Daring Greatly by Brene Brown um, is a really good book. Um, the, the, um, Rising Strong is a sequel, and uh, her, her, I heard her third book is coming out soon. So definitely Brene Brown. She's famous for her TED Talks on vulnerability and shame. Mm -hmm. She got that great video. It's um, like a yak or something and down in the hole. Right. Oh yes. That was on empathy and listening. Yeah. Well, it's a great video. Yeah. I watched that yeah. one every so often. I just have it show up again to watch in my feed of things to do. Yes. Really. That's really helpful for parents and for coaches. Mm. Yeah. So where can people get a hold of you? I'm at uh, savonpen.com. I wrote it, write about counseling topics and parenting, marriage, especially. Awesome. And Twitter. And I'm Twitter. on Twitter. <laughs> At Savon Penn. Awesome. And I'll have those links in the show notes. Thanks for joining us today, Savon. And we'll see you, I guess, probably next week for the Read to Lead group. Awesome. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks for having me.